Hi guys and welcome back. If you're wondering why this one's a little bit all over the place this video, it's because it's a compilation of four different videos that I've re-edited back together just to make it easier. So it's going to be the Worktop series all put together in one one long video just to make it easier for people that want to watch it in that way. So yeah, that's why it might be a bit up and down and that might be why you're wondering if, why you've already seen this stuff. But yeah, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to let you guys jump in and I hope you enjoy it. Got any questions, let me know down in the comments. But I'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is take a look and familiarise ourselves with our jig. Now, this is my jig. It's a Unica jig, if you can see that in there. Made in England, really good. Moderately, but fairly priced one. These are about £40, £50 in the UK. Um, yeah, just a decent jig. Stay away from the MDF ones. They don't last five minutes. You want one of these uh, full micro type ones. Pretty solid. So, what we need to do first is establish what way round we're going to use this jig and how to use one of these jigs. So if you look over here, you'll see we've got numbers 600, 616 and 620. Now they're standard worktop sizes. You can get other sizes, but they're primarily the standard ones that we're going to work with. For, for today's demonstration, we're going to be using the 600 for everything. Now you can see you have got 500, 400 and 300 on there as well. And they're for your breakfast bar types or if you cut a worktop down. But for today, we're going to be using 600. 600 and 620 are generally the standard ones. Don't hold me to that. Check all your bits of worktop. You know, put tape measure from front to back. But we're going to be doing 600. So what you've got is you've got male and female sides on here. So you'll see on these holes here, we've got female on here or F for female. And that's going to be the bit of worktop that receives the cut. On the other side, if we flip it over, you'll see down here, we've got an M for Mal. So this is telling us where we need to put our pins depending on what we're gonna be doing. Now we're gonna be turning our attention to this bit of worktop that I've got in place here. So I'm gonna flip you around and we're gonna show you how to set this onto this. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna be working on this. Now this is actually a 900 deep bit of breakfast bar. We're gonna ignore that for a minute. We're gonna treat this as a standard bit of work top because it's not gonna make a blind bit of difference whether this is 900 deep or 600 bit of deep because we're gonna be working on this corner here. So it's gonna be 600 deep for everything. So what you wanna do is when you introduce your router into it, you always wanna be going in the clockwise direction for where your router's going. So we wanna put a female in. Now, with my, with my jig, it will only let you put it in in a certain way. If you can see in there, it's recessed, and that's to take the head of this when it's in that direction, so it sits flush. It won't let you put it in the wrong way, but some jigs will, so you need to pay attention to that. So, we're gonna be putting it in from that side. We need to route in this direction, so we actually need to turn this bit of worktop over and route from the other side. So I'm gonna do that now, and then I'll show you how to set it up. Okay, so now we've got our bit of worktop set round, it's time to actually set up our jig for what we want to do. So this is going to be receiving the female end, which you'll see because the other bit of worktop is going to be going into that. So the other bit's going to be the male. So to set this up, what we want to do is put our pin into the 600. Now, you'll have to excuse me because these ain't the right pegs for this jig, so I'll have to use a hammer to put them in. Normally you shouldn't need to do that. And then what we want to do is put pegs into our female section. The one marked with the F. I'll just get another one for over there. Okay, so here's our last one. So yes, the other one goes into this section here, as you can see. So anywhere with an F on it for this one. Okay, so that's how pe that's where our pegs need to go to set this up. And now what you want to do is when you set your jig on, you want to make sure that you're referencing on all three of these pegs. That's really important because if it's not, if it's sitting slightly like this, your joint's not going to come together very well. So what you want to do is put your jig on and make sure you push them two pegs in like that. Really push them in and then push down on there. So you make sure that all three of these 
are in the right place and then you can clamp on and we'll do our cut with our router which I'll take you outside to do we're not going to do it in here okay so as you can see we've moved outside now so what we're going to do is we're going to set our jig up again so like I said make sure pegs are pushed up and in in all directions make sure all of those pegs are touching um, and then clamp it on now you re really do want to use a decent set of clamps not necessarily these these are quite expensive but a decent set of clamps for this because you don't want this jig moving as you as you do it one there and also it's important to try and get these clamps you can see mine's hanging over the edge a little bit and that's because I know for a fact that my router will bind with that as we go you don't want to be moving clamps as you're routing because then you run the risk of slipping the, the um, of this slipping so you really don't want to do that you want these out the way enough and I know for a fact that that is enough for my router to clear now before we go ahead we're just going to do one more double check make sure all of those pegs are touching which they are and we can go ahead and route it now don't try and route this in one go don't even do it in three goes try and do this maybe in about five passes um you really don't want to put a lot of strain on your router and these cutters um you really want to take your time with it and just take it in nice slow passes as you go through the, the important thing to remember is the cutter's moving in that direction so it's going to break out everything on its outward cut so that's why we've got this bit of work top upside down and when we come to do the mail on the other side you'll see that it's the other way up um, just so it doesn't break out on this entry edge over here so let's do that Okay, I'm just going to stop there, um, just so I can show you guys, I've literally gone about 5 mil deep on there, so it's going to take a few passes, it's going to be a bit annoying, but ultimately that's going to give you the cleanest cut, and it's going to put less strain on your router as well, and that cutter, you don't want that cutter slipping. Okay, so that's it. So you can see that our piece has now dropped away and hit the floor. But before I unset any of this or take this away, what I want to do is actually bring the router back into the start position and just do one final sweep through there. Don't adjust the jig at all. Just one final sweep, just to make sure there's no lumps and bumps or any nasty bits that's going to hold your two bits of work top apart. It's worth it just for them couple of seconds just to run that router through. okay guys and there you can see we've got a lovely clean cut through there no lumpy bits no jumpy bits in there at all so that's nice and clean now i, I would normally now do my worktop bolts in there if you haven't seen the video i'll link it up here and in the description i've done a whole video on how to do the bolts so go and check that one out um but then what we're going to do now is take this back in and we're going to turn our attention to doing the male part of the worktop that joins up with this so yeah like i said up here for the uh worktop bolt video or down in the description okay so now we've got this bit of worktop back in place you can see that i've put the bolt holes in there yet again if you want to know how to do that there's a video up in this corner here or this one can't remember which one so this is going to be our bit of worktop that's going to join into here but as you can see, we haven't got a join on here yet. We need to put a mason's miter coming back across here. So I'm gonna show you now how to set the jig up and then I'm gonna take it outside and route that. Okay, so if you can imagine, this is the edge that butts up against that one. So this bit of work top will turn around and go in there. So that's the edge we wanna work on. Yet again, on my jig, but you're gonna to need to check this on your jig. I can only put mine up one way but you'll have to put yours up that way. So if our router cutter's going on in this direction here, all the breakout's gonna be on that side, so it's not gonna break this nice edge that we've got down here. So what you wanna look for is you wanna look for the two holes with the M next to it, and that's for our mouth section, because this one's going into that one. And then we wanna put our two pegs in there. Yet again, you shouldn't need to use a hammer for yours. 
but I do. Now, this is where it's tricky with this because you've got a relatively small reference point to work to on here. So I'd recommend referencing to your two pegs, but then actually putting a nice square on here to check that is because you might think it's square, but it might just throw out ever so slightly. Now, when we cut this out, we don't want to be cutting in the middle of our worktop. There's no point. It's going to put extra strain on our router that we don't need to be doing. Now, between the 30 mil guide bushing and the side of your router cutter, it's a, it's a nine mil offset. So I normally just put two marks at about 10 mils so that make sure that we're taking a continuous cut right the way across there and taking this front part out. So I'm going to take this outside, do that mark, do that cut, which I'll show you doing. Um, but it's pretty much the same as the other one. So we're just going to take it nice and slow in five mil, in about five passes and then one final pass right the way through to finish off with. So just remember, mark back about 10 mil here and it just means that you're going to be taking a cut right the way down, but it means that you don't have to take a, a big chunk out of the worktop. So basically a clean up cut through there. Okay, so same as the other side, nice and easily, we're gonna take this in five passes just to make sure that we're not putting too much strain on the router and just so we give it a nice clean cut, let's do it. Okay, so that's all our passes done. We're just gonna take that final clean up pass nice and slow just to make sure we're all cleaned up. Let's do it. Okay, so that's our work top all done, all jointed up. So we're actually gonna go ahead and put it together now. So if I get this in place, I'll bring you guys over and show you. Now it looks a bit gappy now, but when we get the bolts and all that in set in, that's gonna look lovely. Now, it's up to you what you put in your joints. I use silicon on mine. I find that it holds perfectly well, really, really good. If I show you over here, this is a silicon joint here, and there's no color fill in that at all. So that's what I like to use in my joints. I've been doing that for um, about 17 years now, something like that and I've never had one fail on me, so I carry on doing that. Some guys like to use color fill, some like to use PVA. It's up to you, your discretion, what you want to use. I put silicon in mine, so um, yeah. But let me know in the comments what you like to use on yours, um, if you use scent different or whatever you use. But basically, in a nutshell, what we're gonna do now is bolt up below. I'm not gonna show you too much of the bolting, because yet again, in the how to do worktop bolt videos, I'll go into a lot of detail about that there, so you can check that. But I am going to show you, I mean, these are actually sitting lovely and flush, but I'm going to show you how to get these nice and flush um, as you're doing the bolts up. So let's crack on with that. Okay, so what we've done is we've got them bolts pretty much done up. They're, they're kind of nipped tight. So it's just pulled that joint together. But what you can feel, if it, I'll run my finger along here, you can feel that this worktop sitting about half a millimetre higher than this bit of worktop here. So you can either use a rubber mallet or I like to use a little block of wood and my hammer. Um, you don't want to hit this with your hammer for obvious reasons. You're going to put a whacking great big hole in your worktop. Um, and just gently go along and firmly knock this into place and then we can go along and tighten that up all the way. So just feel, feel your way along where the high points are and give that a tap. And there we have it, that's now sitting 
lovely and flush. Now I'm gonna tighten them bolts up all the way. This might move again, so you'll need to tighten it up, come back up, check it, tighten it again. Um, but ultimately, that's sitting really, really nice. But we'll get them bolts done up all the rest of the way, and then we'll uh, show you what it looks like. And there we have it guys, look at that lovely, clean mason's mitre. Okay, so the things that you're gonna need to do this is you're gonna need a, a half inch router cutter. They come in two different lengths. I'll put the sizes down here because I can't remember off the top of my head. This is the shorter one. It's not really long enough, but it'll do for today. You're gonna need a half inch router to do this. Um, the best one you can possibly afford, to be honest, but if you can only get a cheap one, you can only get a cheap one, but a quarter inch router is not gonna be man enough to do this, and the cutters won't be long enough to do this. So you're gonna need a half inch router. Uh, this is a trend one. They're not too bad. These are about 200 pounds, somewhere around there, uh, but you can get cheaper routers, cheaper half inch routers. You're gonna need a 30 mil guide bush fitted into your half inch router, and that's to, copy along here but we'll go into more detail about that later on and then you're going to need a worktop jig for yourself as well um, or at least you know a worktop jig or a bolt hole jig at least if you're doing a square edge worktop then just a bolt hole jig this one's only got two bolt holes in most of them have three bolt holes in i'm not sure why this one only has two in it but it's the one that i've got i like it um, relatively inexpensive, inexpensive, it was about 30, 40 pounds, somewhere around there. Unique one, it's a good brand, made in the UK, so that's always good. Um, but yeah, they're the things that you're gonna need. I'm gonna bring you in closer now and show you about the jig itself, and then we can uh, actually turn our attention to doing some work top. Let's do it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is familiarize ourselves with our jig. Now, your jig might be different to mine. Yours might have a third bolt hole section in here. Um, this is just the one that I've got. Some have three, some have two. Doesn't really bother me because I like to move my jig along anyway, but we'll get to that a little bit further down the road. So we've got these things here that are called pegs. These go into the holes, as you can see here. They're quite a tight fit, you want them tight to go in. For the purpose of this video, what we want to look at on our jig is this one here that says B on it, B for bolts. That's what we want to look at on our jig when we do this and our pegs go into there and they sit down into a little recess so they sit nice and flush. Okay, so something we need to determine before we start doing anything is where we actually want to put our bolt holes. Now, with the jigs with the three holes in, it's tempting just to put the jig straight on and wrap the three holes in place. Now, I don't like to do that. That's why it doesn't bother me that my jig's got two holes in it rather than three bolt holes. Because what I like to do is actually be able to position my bolt holes where I want them rather than where they're determined. And it's simply because you don't want to fall like onto this back panel or you don't want to fall into where there's obstructions in the way. So I like to go through and measure out where I'm going to put one. So I'm going to put a bolt hole about 100 mil in, if you can see that. Let me move the camera for you. So you should be able to see that from there. So if I put one up 100 mil, that's going to clear that back panel by about 30 mil. So that means that when we come to do our bolt hole up, there's nothing in the way. So we can do one in the center at about 300 mil. That's fine, obviously there's no obstructions. And I'm gonna do one at 500 mil. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because you can see these two screws here and here, if you can see. Yeah, you've got these two screws here and here. If I put that at 500 mil, it's just gonna clear them. So I'm gonna to have to put a little hole into, the, into this bracing piece here, rather than doing it on the front edge and breaking through this front edge or something. So that's what I normally tend to do over the years. I've normally found that 100, 300, 500 normally gives me a decent amount of spacing. Obviously check that for the one you're doing to make sure that's gonna work for you. But yeah, general rule of thumb, we're gonna do that. So I can now take this bit of worktop outside, do our mason's mitre and then do that. Now I am gonna be doing a video on how to do the mason's mitre and there's also already a video on the ch channel of how to square 
how to join square edge worktop so if you haven't seen that yet it'll put, i'll link it up in this top corner here and down in the description for you now they might not be out at the time of me doing this video but they will be there so check back maybe next week or something like that if they're not there yet they will be there shortly like i said there'll be a link here to how to join a mason's mitre worktop and down in the description and there is already a video on the channel about how to join square edge worktops so you can check both of those out and they should uh, help you out there okay so we're now going to do our bolt holes now you can see i'm inside i wouldn't advise doing this inside but it's raining outside so we kind of got no choice um this does make a lot of mess don't do it inside if you can get away with it um go outside but like i said we've got no choice in this matter so we've got to do it but yeah just bear in mind it's going to be really messy so what we want to do first is get our jig set up so what we want to do is put our two pegs into the bolt holes now on mine they're marked by b um they should be something similar on yours marked out so yeah two pegs in you shouldn't have to hammer these in but these aren't the right pegs for this one so i have to use a hammer to get mine in. Like I said, you want them tight in there, you just don't want them that tight, but I've had this jig for a long, long time and yeah, I've lost loads of bolts. Well. Okay, so that's them in. So that's our jig set up. That's all we need to do for bolt holes to set up is two pegs in there. So we we'll move that out of the way for a second. Now we want to mark out where we actually want to put our bolts. Um, first of all, we're going to take this fuzzy edge off from the router. just do that with me back on my square or a knife or anything right so we're going to mark out for our bolts now if you remember when we measured up on the carcass we wanted 100 300 and 500 so we're going to mark them out now it's important to remember that this measurement is going to be the center of this hole not the edge it's going to be the center now you probably can't see on there Maybe you can. I've got a little centre mark that I've marked into mine. Um, just to help you with doing this. I'd advise you do the same. So we're just going to square these lines back. Like so. Now normally I'd use pencil but I'm doing this in a sharpie for you guys so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to bring our jig over and we're going to line it up with the little centre mark like I said that I've put in the back there. If you haven't got a centre mark you can always measure to the centre just to make sure you know you can get your tape measure in there and just sort of measure to make sure you're in the middle. But you want to be in the middle of there, you don't want to be offset like that because then when you do it on the other side you might set to the other side and then you'll be out. So line up to your middle and then we want some decent clamps on there to hold this down now bearing in mind the size of your router base you don't want to put these clamps in the way as you're routing and bashing into them um, i would recommend using some decent clamps for this or if you haven't got decent clamps like these are quite expensive if you haven't got decent ones just put multiple clamps on there because you don't want this jig slipping whilst you're doing this so put as many as you can on and then that's the jig set we don't need to touch the jig now until we've done that hole we obviously need to move it for our next holes but we'll come to that in a moment okay so the next thing we need to set is the depth of our router now we do that with these pillars here and this little adjustable gauge it might be different on yours but they're generally similar so i'm going to move that round and then we can set this at zero like that so now that's zeroed off so we know that this distance here whatever this is is the depth that we're going to plunge now this is a 38 mil worktop i don't want to go right away through this worktop excuse me i don't want to go right away through the worktop we want to go about three quarters somewhere around there we don't want to be too shallow because it, we're not going to get a proper bite on it but we don't want to go too far because we don't want to weaken the face on this so yeah about anywhere from half to three quarters <coughs> Is about right so I'm gonna go about 20 mil so there you go that is now set to 20 mil so when I plunge this down it will only go down 20 mil in there 
If you're not confident doing it this way, I'll show you another way now quickly. Okay, so it's now time to do the router in itself. Now the things that we want to bear in mind here is we don't want to take off too much in one go. Basically, we don't want to loosen this router cutter and plunge through. And if you try and take this all out in one go, that is going to put a lot of strain on that router cutter and start to pull it down. It doesn't matter how tight you've got this collet, it will do that. So we're going to maybe do this in three passes just to make sure that we're not putting too much strain on the router. By this point, once you've done all these joints and all that, that cutter's not going to be as sharp as it was when you started. So you can put a new cutter in, but I'd suggest just take some short bites. Maybe do that in three passes, just so you're not overworking the router itself. Let's do it. And there you have it, guys. That is your bolt hole routed. And make sure you give that a good clean out before you're underneath it, because otherwise you get all that dust in your eyes. Right, so it's time to move to our next bolt hole. Like I said, if you've got the one with the three in there, you might get away with not having to move this jig at all. You might be able to do all three, but I like to just make sure that I do it. Now, the important thing to remember is when you put this clamp on, you don't want to go over the bolt hole that you've just done because that's going to be a weakened point and you're going to put all the pressure of that clamp onto that bolt hole. So just try and clamp on a solid bit of worktop rather than that. You might have to put your clamps in this orientation as I've got to do here because I've got nothing on this end to go to, but yeah, that's it. I'll get these done, I'll come back to you. Okay, and there we go. That is our three bolt holes routed, and you can see from our marks, we're in the middle on all of those. So I'm gonna do the same on the next piece of worktop, and then I'm gonna bring you in and show you how to actually do these bolts up from inside the cupboard. Okay, so as you just saw, I just tried the worktop in. I'm happy with it. I marked it to length and I cut that to length. So we're happy that this is gonna fit. Um, but what we need to do now is put a hole over here so we can do that bolt up from the inside, like I was saying to you earlier. And the advantage of, I don't know if I, you can see, see that little pile of dust there? That's why when we tried that bit of worktop on, the hole from that, the dust from that worktop bolt drops down. So we know where that bolt hole is. So a nice big hole saw here, and we'll just drill that out. And there we have it. Now we can do our bolt hole up. So it's time to do these up. I'm not gonna show you the whole process, because like I said, on the video where I show you how to do these masons miters, I will show you how to do the worktop up there, but yet again, up here and in the description for that, but I will show you how to do these bolts up here. So stick around, we're gonna be inside the cupboard in the next shot, showing you how to do them bolt holes. Okay, a little tip with these bolts for you guys before we jump under there. When you're trying to get these in, they can flop around and go all over the place. So what I do is I push it up to make sure it engages in the little hole. And I'll get a bit of tape, a bit of tape, and we just wrap that round. And what that will do is that stops that end bit falling out and makes it a lot easier for you when you're in there. So I recommend doing that. Okay, so we're in the cupboard. This is the awkward part. So I might sound a bit funny when I'm doing this, but this is what we need to do to do these bolts up. Lay down in the cupboard, and I'm gonna put one of these bolts in just to show you how it goes. So, 
hope you guys can see that. I'm gonna show you putting this one in here. So what we wanna do, we pop our bolt in, hold it on the ends, finger tight. Now you will get dust in your eyes here, so it's not a very pleasant job to do, but it does need doing. So yeah, we're just gonna do that bolt up finger tight, and then with a 10 mil spanner, you can get ratchet in ones, but I find them a bit awkward to get out sometimes. So I'll just use a normal one. We're just gonna do that bolt up. Okay, so we're actually going to be working on this breakfast bar edge here, which is a bit longer than normal, but um, it's the clearest edge that I've got to show you guys and how to work on it. Now you can see that I've got the protection on here, the worktop protection. Now normally this would be enough for what we're doing, but for demonstration purposes for you guys, I'm actually going to peel it back and then I'm going to show you how to mask this up. Now I'm going to be using this product here, which is a spray contact adhesive. I prefer this type, I find it a bit easier to apply. You can use the um, the pot of impact adhesive. I'll put a little overlay picture on here for you so you can see that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna be using this, but it's the same process for both. You just apply to both faces, let it go, to, let it go dry to the touch and then apply it. So I'm gonna peel back this edge and then we're gonna, I'm gonna mask up and show you guys how I mask up and take it from there. I've got that peeled back. You can see this is a lovely clean edge straight off the saw, but what I do wanna do is just take a bit of sandpaper. This is 80 grit on a block of wood. And I just wanna go over that edge lightly just to make sure that it's sanded properly. We don't want no lumpy bits because that might hold it off. So now we've got that sanded, we're happy with that. That's a good clean edge. We're just gonna give it a good dust off, make sure there's no dust or anything that's gonna stop the glue adhering properly. And then we can go ahead and mask up. Now we wanna put our masking tape right on that edge. And what this is gonna do is stop over spray of the glue, but it's also gonna help protect it when we come to trim back on our, uh, when we come back to trim, trim back our ripping. Okay, so that's enough protection for this. Plus we've got the, the worktop protection still on there anyway. Use your own discretion for here. If you've got stuff, if you've got an upstand or whatever, just make sure everything's good and protected because this stuff is a git to get off once it's on there. Okay, so now we're all uh, protected up. What we want to do is get a bit of our edging and we want to measure out and cut maybe 10 mil longer for a second. Now, a good pair of scissors cuts this stuff no problem, as you can see. Keep the spare bit just in case we mess up. What we want to do is we want to hold this on in place and then take our pencil and gently just draw down the back of it because we're going to remove the bulk of the waste to start with. And there we have it. So you can see there's quite a bit of excess on there so we're going to cut that off to start with. Yet again, with our scissors, stay off the line. Don't try and get it bang on. Okay, so that's our edging cut and you can see it's slightly over by a couple of mil but it's not bang on and we haven't got excess amounts to take off. So now we actually want to put the adhesive on itself. Now this is a contact adhesive, so it grabs straight away once it goes on. So the premise of this is you put a coat on the surface that it's going to, a coat on the surface that you want to put on, and then you leave it. It recommends 10 minutes on here, but I like to leave it a bit longer than that. Just you want to touch it and you don't want to stick to it at all. 
Okay, now when we apply this stuff, what you want to do is you don't want to be erratic with it. You want a nice constant stream on there. And the same with the liquid one, you don't want loads of lumps and bumps in there. You really want to smooth this stuff out. Take your time at this stage because this is what's going to help you further on. So I'm going to reposition the camera. I'm going to show you how we spray this onto both surfaces. Okay, so here we go. We're going to get that on. We're going to give it a bit of a shake up first to make sure it's all shook up. We're going to go at a downward angle rather than straight on. And then we're just going to do one continuous strike right away along rather than doing loads of bits and pieces. Okay, and there you can see that's all nice and coated. Okay, now we want to do it on the other face here, and this is where this bit of cardboard is going to help us because the overspray on this is going to be quite a lot. So we can use this bit of cardboard to our advantage, but same thing again, nice constant spray. And you can see that I'm moving that to go around the bend as it goes on. And that's it. Now you can see we've got a nice even coating on there with no gaps. We're going to leave that about 15 to 20 minutes and let that coat up and then I'll show you how to put it on. Okay, so that's now had about 20 minutes to tack up and um, our hand doesn't stick to it at all. So we know that that's now ready to put together. So what we're going to do is taking our clean edge, our factory edge, we're going to put our fingers on the bottom of it and we're going to line that up with the bottom of the worktop and then we're going to carefully work our way along trying to get this as straight as possible be careful because once this is on it's on it's not going to come back off again so we're going to try and line our edge up like i said fingers on the bottom and work our way along pushing that on as we go Okay, and now with this stuff, this stuff is like an impact adhesive, so it probably will peel off, peel off at that point, but not very cleanly. So what we want to do with palm of our hand, we want to go along and give that good tapping right away along. Now, if your hands start to hurt on this, you can use a little rubber mallet to tap this on with. Don't use a hammer because you don't want to split this top edge, but we're just going to work our way along, making sure we cover everything. There we go, that's stuck on there. That's not gonna come off now. Okay, so we now need to start trimming this up and we're gonna start with the edge. We're gonna use a Stanley knife for this with a new blade in it, an extremely sharp blade and a block of wood. What we're gonna do is place a block of wood on the top, as you can see there, and we're gonna take our knife on a slight angle and get right in that corner and just gently do a few cuts. Don't try pushing too hard here. You're better off doing gentle cuts, nice and slowly, and then what you can do is just snap that bit back, and that's perfectly flush with the edge now. We will clean that up further, but I'll show you that in a minute. We're gonna turn our attention to this top edge. Okay, so like I said, we're gonna clean up this top edge, and to do that, what we're gonna do is use a file, but we don't wanna keep our file flush like that. We wanna pivot up on a slight angle. You don't wanna go mental angle, maybe somewhere around about five degrees, and what you wanna do is just carefully file that edge but if I can show you what you want to do is kind of push and break this edge at the same time like so now you do need to be careful here because it will go deep I'd recommend using an old file for this this isn't this is a new one but it will dig its way in if it can do so you want to take it nice and slow nice and gentle don't put downward pressure on your file. Almost let your file skate over the top. And then what that's going to do is just clean the edge. We are going to go back with a bit of sandpaper later, so don't worry about getting it perfect, but you want to get this edge down nice and flush. Okay, so now we've got that filed. Be careful, because that's going to be like a razor edge on there, so don't run your finger along there, because that will be sharp. And now go along, take our masking tape off. That masking tape really just did help us not to scratch the face of this worktop with our file. Okay, 
So now we've got that all peeled off. Like I said, this is gonna be extremely sharp, so we're gonna to need to knock that corner off. So we're gonna use our same bit of 80 grit sandpaper. And what we're gonna do is just go along that edge. Now we wanna be on about a 45 degree angle here because we're not trying to get flush anymore. We should be flush with the worktop at this point. So what we wanna do is just knock that sharp arris off of there. So we're just gonna light the sand of the Just have a feel at this point. Like I said, be careful. Just to make sure there's no sharp bits. There's a bit there. But there you have it guys. That is the edging strip fitted on this worktop. Okay, so you can see here what I've got is my sink turned upside down and roughly in place where we want it. And the way that I established that is just I threw this bowl to make sure it sits within the cupboard. Now I have got an overflow on this side. If I take you round here, you can see I've got an overflow on this as well, which comes out to the side. So I've got to make sure when I line it in with the cupboard that I've got enough room in there to get that overflow and that pipe in. So what I want to do is just on the corners, draw around it. If you can see that. There you go, so yeah, just draw around on the corners. And then what we're gonna do is take our sink away. And then what I wanna do is use some masking tape and mask out the area of where the sink's going. Now the reason that I wanna do this is because I can then draw on top of the masking tape and I don't need to worry about getting sharpie marks on the worktop or anything. So we'll do that. Okay, so there you have it. You can see that I've masked out exactly where our sink's gonna go. So now we can actually bring the sink back over, lay that on and we can actually start transferring marks across. So we'll line that back up with our original marks that we can just about see. Only just about, mind. Okay, so yeah, so I like to set 50 mil back from the face edge. I find that that's just a nice distance, it looks good. Okay, so now we've got that placed where we want it. What we can do is take our pencil and we're just gonna draw around the sink nice and carefully. Don't go too deep here. Okay, so as you guys just saw, we just drew around this, if I move it back a touch, we just drew around this with pencil, but obviously we can't cut on that line, because if we do, our sink's just gonna drop straight away through. So we need to do an offset line. So if you see here, you've got this little ridge on the sink here, and that is 12 mil back from this edge to this ridge edge. Now we don't wanna do 12 mil because it'd be tight and it won't give us much tolerance. So I like to cut about nine, 10 mil away from the line. So what we're gonna do is take this sink away and then we're gonna do a nine millimeter mark inwards and that's gonna create our lip for our sink to sit on. I'll show you what I mean now. Okay, so like I said, there, there's our pencil line where we drew round the sink. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna move nine mil back I'm gonna do here, just to give us a bit of tolerance. And we're going to go round and we're going to mark nine mil right the way round. Join them lines up and then we're just going to freehand roughly nine mil round this radius here. And that's going to give us our cut line. So let's do that. Okay, so as you can see, I drew right away round. I'll just draw this corner in um, freehand, so, but I just thought I'd share this and show you guys this one. So all we wanna do is just roughly round that in so we can see our corners. Now you'll see that I've done this on Sharpie and now that's on purpose and purely that's because I don't wanna cut to the wrong line. If I did both of these in pencil, 
there's a chance that I cut on the wrong pencil line. So by doing it in Sharpie, I know for a fact that I need to cut the Sharpie line and not the pencil line. And that's gonna stop me making a mistake. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can cut this out. You can drill a hole in all four corners and go round it with a jigsaw. You can go round it with a track saw. We've also got these rounded corners, so the track saw is not gonna be any good for the corners, so you will have to finish them off. You can get a nice big hole saw and drill them corners out first if you want to. Um, I tend to do this with the track saw, but I think for the purposes of the videos and just to show you guys, um, you're more than likely going to have a jigsaw. Not everyone's got a track saw, so I'm going to do this with the jigsaw just to show you guys how it's done. Um, yeah, and then we can turn our attention to actually putting our sink in. Okay, so there we go. So now we're at that stage. We've got our cut out done. We're happy with it. We've put our sink in, we've checked it, we're happy. Um, what you wanna do is go ahead and seal this edge. Now, arguably, I don't have to seal this one because we're putting a ceramic sink in and it's gonna be sitting on a bed of silicon, so the chances of water getting down there is negligible, but we're gonna do it anyway, just for the sake of the video and you know, peace of mind, really, more than anything. So. What I do is I just get a bit of PVA on an old paintbrush and I brush that on. I'll show you that now, but yeah, I just wanted to explain that to you guys before I went ahead and do it. And then you're like, well, what are you doing? So yeah, we just want to seal this edge against water. Like I said, the chances of water getting down there with a ceramic sink probably won't happen, but you never know. But if you're putting like a stainless steel sink with a rubber gasket, you probably will get a little bit of water down there. So just that extra measure, just to make sure that uh, we can sleep well at night. So let's do that. Okay, so now we've given it a bit of time to let that PVA set up on the back edges here and all the edges. It's time to turn our attention to put our sink in. So now this applies to a ceramic sink. Well, this is this is an epoxy sink, but a ceramic sink, epoxy sink, this applies. If you've got a stainless steel sink, you don't need to do this because it'll probably have a rubber gasket around there with the little clips that you put on. But for these types, what we're gonna do is actually go around and put a silicon on there um, what we want to do, we're going to use a white silicon on this, but if you've got a different coloured one, you might want to go with a clear silicon, so that's down to your discretion, whatever you want to do there. Um, what we want to do is put a nice generous bead round here. We want it to squeeze out, and what we're going to do is let it all squeeze out and then let it dry, and then we can come back later on and cut that out. That's by far the easiest way to do it, but I'll show you that. So, nice generous bead here. We don't want any gaps where we can get any water ingress in there, so let's do that. Okay, so it's now time to flip this over and let all that silicon ooze out. Like I said, we want it to ooze out, we want it to go everywhere because 
we want a really good seal around this. We don't want to have to be running a bead round afterwards to seal it up because it doesn't look very nice. So we want it to be bedded on the silicon. So literally a case of flipping this over now. Try and line up as you go. And really push that sink down. And you can see, I actually didn't get as much squeeze out there as I thought I was gonna get, or that I wanted to get, but you can see like down this edge here, we've got a nice squeeze out of silicon. Like I said, leave that, let it go hard, and then you can take a standy blade and just gently cut along there, and that'll come out. That is all now ready to be plumbed in. Hope you enjoyed it.